Hey people, isn't it? It's nice talking. Okay. Uh, this is another Black Heroes video. Now, I just learned about this today, but I thought this would be a great thing to report on because I never knew about this either. So, this is from BBC The Korea UK, August Brown, the Nigeria born man who joined the Polish resistance. Among the hundreds of thousands of patriots that Poland celebrates for serving in the resistance movement in World War II, there is one black Nigeria born man. Jazz musician August Agbula Brown was in his 40s and had been in Poland for 17 years. When he joined the struggle against Nazi occupation in 1939, thought to be the only black person in the country to do so. Under the codename Ali, he, vote for, he fought for his adopted country during the siege of Warsaw, where Germany invaded and later in the Warsaw Uprising, which ended 76 years ago this month. Astoundingly, he survived the war in which 94% of the res residents of Poland's capital were either killed or displaced and continued living in the ravaged city until 1956, when he emigrated with his second wife to Britain. A small stone monument in Warsaw now commemorates Brown's life. The scant details that there are may never have been known were not for an application he made to join a veterans association in 1949. The document was filed away for six decades until 2009, when Zbigny Osinski from the Warsaw Rising Museum came across it. This form filled out in beautiful cursive handwriting with a passport-style photo attached to one corner. It is his Rosetta Stone, the documentary fragment that led researchers to interpret isolated facts about his life and locate living descendants. In the picture, Brown, dressed in a jacket and fit, snugly fitting jumper, looks lively and youthful with a hint of a smile on his face. All who met Brown described him as a handsome man and a sharp dresser. By this time, he was in his 50s, as the form reveals that he was born on 22nd of July 19, 1895 to Wallace and Josephina in Lagos, then part of the British Empire. He arrived in Br England aboard a British merchant ship with his longshoreman father. From there, he joined a theatre troupe touring uh, Europe and ended up in Poland via Germany. Sheltered ghetto refugees... Frustratingly, the form does not say what inspired him to leave Nigeria or make Poland his destination, so an adventurous spirit seems the likeliest explanation, but by the 1930s, he became a celebrated jazz percussionist playing Warsaw's restaurants. What Brown did write was that in the resistance, he distributed underground newspapers, traded electronic equipment, and sheltered refugees from the ghetto. This was a sealed-off area of the city in which Jews were forced by the Nazis to live and where 91,000 died from starvation, disease, and murder. So 300,000 were transported to their deaths in Nazi concentration camps. It appears that for Brown, staying in Poland after the war was a choice. As a citizen of the British Empire, he had the opportunity to leave. When he arrived in Poland, he first settled in Krakow, where he married his first wife, Zofia Bigona, with whom he had two sons, Rysard and Alexander. The marriage failed by the outbreak of the war. Brown arranged for his children and their mother to seek refuge in England. Perhaps committed to the Polish struggle, Brown did not go with them. The incomplete jigsaw information gives rise to so many questions about his life. A quiet private man. Tatiana, his daughter from his second much longer marriage to Olga Mjokowicz, was bo born and brought up in London and is his only surviving child in Britain. She says he never talked about what had happened to him. She is now 61. Her father died in 1976 when she was 17. She remembers him as a very qu quiet, very private and quite distant, and that he never discussed his background in pro Poland or his early years in Lagos. Tatiana is not certain why neither of her parents told her much about their past. She suspects it was to bury the trauma they endured and the atrocities they witnessed. Peggy Bax recalls watching a documentary about the war with her parents and her saying, I remember seeing people being hanged in the streets. I know that's true because I saw it with my own eyes. But there was no discussion and now she wishes they had told her more. Brown, though, never turned his back on the Polish culture they had lived in for almost 35 years, and Tatiana says that Polish was the only language spoken in their London home. It was remembered by an acquaintance in Poland for speaking the purest Polish language, even with a Warsaw accent. He was fluent in several languages. They had taught me how to write and read, how to read and write in English, Tatiana says. How the musician who, as a black person, could have been so conspicuous, was able to survive in Nazi-occupied po Poland remains a mystery. Two of African men, Joseph Diak from Sudan and Sam Sandi, whose exact place of origin on the continent is unclear, served in the Polish army during the Polish-Bolshevik War of 1919-1921 and remained in Warsaw afterwards, but both died before World War II began. Discounting them and Brown, experts say there may have been two other black Warsaw resident, residents in the interwar years, professional entertainers whose traces disappeared during the occupation. But Tatiana's re recollection of her father's charismatic personality may give a clue to his own endurance. Dad had a real quick wit and a real charm about him, Tatiana says. When he used to go to church on a Sunday, I used to see him interact with other people. He had a real warmth that drew you in so you automatically liked him. When he was in company with other people, there was just energy. People were drawn to him. Brown's story emerged in 2009 at a time of heightened patriotism and xenophobia in Poland. It drew immediate interest from across the political spectrum and there were calls to memorialize him as a national hero. At that time, then-President Lech 
Kaczynski, co-founder of the Conservative Law and Justice Party, wanted to honor him on the occasion of the 65th anniversary of the Warsaw Uprising, told Krzysztof Korpinski, a jazz historian who served as the vice president of the Polish Jazz Association, which was contacted by Kaczynski's office for more information about Brown. But Kaczynski died in a plane crash in 2010, and the plan apparently went with him. It was not until last year that a small monument to the Nigerian-Polish resistance fighter was finally unveiled. That was funded by a non-profit organization, the Freedom and Peace Movement Foundation. His war service is honored by conservatives and progressives alike to symbolize the Poland of today. Brown led a modest existence in England for the last two decades of his life. He continued working as a musician at first doing session, session work. When he got older, we had a piano at home, so he used to give piano lessons, Tatiana says. They were a lovely family, Dr. Ma- Michael Modell, who treated Brown for council members. He died at the age of 81 in 1976 and is buried under a plain headstone in a North London cemetery. There is no sign of the traumatic and tumultuous events that he had been part of, which reflects the way he apparently lived his life. Which reflects the, there was no sign of traumatic and tumultuous events that he had been part of, which reflects the way he apparently lived his life in London. To me, it was just growing up at home with a mom and dad. Whatever our life was, it was my normal, Tatiana says. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. I'll leave this and some other sources in the description. If you'd like to support this channel, leave my GoFundMe in the description. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'll leave it there as well. Peace.